So I've just come back from a holiday, just come back from a much needed break, 10 day break in Fuerteventura, really nice, very hot out there. My Albino self obviously struggling with the heat over there and have come back to England yesterday to the pissing rain. Shit has well and truly hit the fan since I've been back, Jesus Christ. And I know this video is obviously well overdue and quite late, but obviously I've been away on holiday and I have come back with a bit of a cough. So if this video, is slightly slow, I'm talking a bit slowly or a bit odd, that's why. But as I said, this video is very long overdue. It's not gonna have a structure to it because there is just so much to cover with this video and it will probably end up being a rant because as I said, a lot's gone on and a lot of frustrating things have gone on and to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of people have been saying our start to the season, with our start to the season five games in, obviously we sit 19th in the table, many people were saying, you know, the season's over and I've been trying to have a bit of a a more positive review, uh, view, sorry, on that. Saying that, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and there's still a long way to go. But with recent events, maybe it is over already with the stuff that's gone on. So I feel we may as well just dive straight into it and address the elephant in the room. Another change to the staff at the club. Dean Holden has been sacked as Charlton manager. Here we go again. Here we go again. I'm sick to death of it. I'm, I'd, 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 the amount of managers I've had to go through since doing this channel has been ridiculous. This is the fifth different manager we've had in, what is it now? I think still three years, three and a half years since Bobby left. And so many more caretakers before then. Obviously, this is the first time me addressing my thoughts about Holden sacking. I think it came out early this week. Um, I gave my thoughts via an Instagram story post and I posted that story post on my YouTube community tabs. So you probably already know what my uh, opinion of the sacking is. And this is the first time I get to address it here on this channel. I'm not going to bother reading the club statement because it's pointless. and I'm just going to get straight into my thoughts. I think it's the same as Ben Garner's sacking premature and completely and utterly ridiculous. I don't know what we're doing. There's been so many different opinions that have gone on about Alden recently. A lot of people calling for his head, which I think was absolutely stupid, to be honest with you. I stand by my opinion of, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Ultimately, he's had five games this season. Yes, I understand it's not gone very well. But no way did I think he deserved to be sacked. Global Football Partners' decision to sack him four days before transfer deadline day, which is today, the day you're seeing this video, with no replacement lined up. What sort of player is going to come to this club in this situation? I mean, obviously they claim that the recruitment strategy and the transfer strategy hasn't changed, which to be fair, it hasn't done because we seem to be doing a lot of business today, which we'll get into a bit later in this video very briefly and in another video later next week. I, I just, I just so, I'm so, I'm frustrated. I'm so... Frustrated that we've again decided to cut ties with a manager prematurely and so soon, considering that it was what February or March when Holden signed a three year contract until 2026. This was a project, and Charlie Meffin even said it himself. It was actually it was Charlie Meffin and SC7 Partners back in December that appointed Holden, that was hit their choice. And then they, they give him a three year contract and they say, yeah, he's going to be a project. And Meffin even said when he took over the club, he said, yes, our main ambition is to get out of League One as quick as physically possible. But he said to the other investors that it could take time. Sacking the manager that's just been given a three year contract goes exactly against that. And obviously, as I said, there's been so many different opinions surrounding Holden. So many people have said that I was well out of his depth. Yeah, we had to let him go. He's a nice guy, but we had to let him go. And yes... Tactically, and some of the formation and some of the team selections were very questionable. You'd have to say for the first five games of the season, the tactic was re re really the same. You know, there wasn't really a plan B with Holden. We just get the ball to our centre backs and they would just pass it around the back constantly. And sometimes we couldn't even do that. We'd punt the ball long for our five foot nine striker, Alfie May, who would either be offside or we'd over hit the pass or under hit the pass and we'd never find him. And then, if that didn't work, we'd have an over-reliance on the wide areas. We'd get the ball out wide and put balls into the box. And again, Alfie May's 5'9". He's got no one next to him to win the header. He can't win headers. And it goes away and they get it clear. 
and then we're vulnerable to a counter-attack. Defensively, we've been absolutely shambolic this season so far, worse than last year, which I don't know how I've been able to do that. So yes, I can understand from that perspective. Tactically, very questionable. The team selection against Oxford, obviously I didn't watch the game because I was on holiday, but the team selection just looked unbelievably questionable. Deji Aleroy was hooked after 40 minutes and we made two more further changes towards the end of the game. Chem Campbell, one of our latest signings, who I haven't actually spoke about. We've signed Chem Campbell on loan from Wolves, which I think could be a decent signing, a much needed option in the wide area. He gets his first assist with probably inside his first 20 minutes as a jump player and Alfie May scores. And then we concede another late goal. Again, what is it, three games running now? Stupid. So yes, I can understand from that perspective the reason to sack him. But ultimately, I don't think he's the bigger problem. And I think it's been very apparent that the manager in general has not been the biggest issue with this football club. It goes way beyond that. Because ultimately, in my opinion anyway, people could disagree with this. Holden hasn't been backed. He hasn't. I don't think he's been given the time and I don't think he's been given the correct tools. Just look at that team. On paper, we've got a fantastic starting eleven when everybody's fully fit, when you've got Fraser, when you've got Leeburn back. But when you look past that and you look at some of the performances that the players have been putting on the pitch for a start and then the depth of the team, it's not there. No way do we have a promotion-worthy team at the moment in terms of the overall squad, in terms of the depth. We have a really encouraging start to the transfer window. We sign Eisted, we sign Jones, we sign May, we sign Kamara. And then the new owners come in. They say they're going to back him. They say that they're going to be aggressive and get you know stuck in with the transfers. They bring in Tyra Doon and Terry Taylor for, for money, which is fantastic. It then takes us four weeks to sign another player in Chem Campbell. We waited for the season to start and get just before the Oxford game to sign a new player. How is that possible? Holden literally said he was waiting for the owners to go to come in so then he can start with his transfer strategy and bring in more players. They had targets lined up. Oh, did you really? You had targets lined up. Yeah, we get Adun and Taylor. And then four weeks later, Chem Campbell. Why is it so late again? Why have we let the season start? With six new players coming into the team when we've got barely any players, quite a lot of academy players in the squad and injuries have already hit us and gave us quite a big humbling in terms of the overall situation of the squad of how poor the depth is and our lack of quality that, it, that is in it. And now we've done the same mistake. We're doing the same mistake that we've done for countless seasons now. Wait until deadline day and just get anyone we can in, especially now without a manager. That's, that's how I see it. Holden was not back correctly, once again. By owners who, at the moment, are not showing much difference to San God. Some people have said, oh yeah, well, they've been brutal, they've got rid of an underachieving manager. Like I said, I think the problem is well beyond that. I don't think he deserved to be sacked. I think he deserved more time, personally. There's the argument that he's been unlucky this season. There's the argument that injuries have hindered us, which is very true. Injuries have hit us. There's the argument that we've been unlucky in certain games. I mean, looking at the five games we've played and including the cup game as well. Leighton Orient, we beat them 1-0. It's to date our only win of the season, which is absolutely unbelievable to say. And to be perfectly honest with you, looking at that performance, we probably have to say, in my opinion anyway, that we were lucky to win that game. I think Leighton Orient probably would have considered themselves unlucky to not come away with at least a point. Newport County in the cup, we won't speak much about that because that was just a diabolical performance from start to finish. Peterborough didn't watch the game, but apparently we played really well and we was unlucky. They scored off a defensive mistake, Panuche Kamara's mistake, which he had come out and apologised for, which gives me every more reason to love the guy falling in love with a lone player again. Bristol Rovers was next, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, it was. Bristol Rovers was next. Obviously got battered in the comments to the Bristol Rovers fans. If I'm being honest with you, looking back on that video... Probably would have to say a draw was a fair result over, uh, over over the whole course of the match. Just once again, considering an, conceding another late goal. Port Vale, again, got battered in the comments by Port Vale fans. Still stand by that that was a game we should have been winning based off Port Vale's performance. But ultimately, defensively, we were just absolutely shambolic. And they sucker punched us and they come away with a win and exposed our true nature of how bad our defence is and how terrible our attack is and that we can't take chances. Ultimately, though, looking back, I think, again, that's another game that we should be coming away with at least a point. And then as for Oxford, again, don't know how we played, but once again, conceding another late goal from a defensive mistake. 
that's just the story of our season, really. We cannot take our chances attackingly and defensively. We are absolutely terrible. So there is the argument there that you do have to look at what Holden is doing on the training ground for our defence to constantly be making those mistakes, for our attack constantly to have no ideas and have the same idea going forward and not taking chances. Like, how have we conceded three late goals in a row? It's actually quite funny because, I mean, I'm probably looking into this too much. But the last three games, Tyro Edun, who I think has been, honestly, one of our best performing players so far this season, he's been taken off for Terrell Thomas while we've been in the game and the game's been level. Every time we've done that, we've conceded a late goal. Coincidence? Like, I, I, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but I don't. that's, that's another thing. Like, why is Edun coming off in the first place? Is it down to lack of fitness? I don't know. We bring on Terrell Thomas, I don't know, for a bit more of defensive assurance, I suppose. Now, that's great, yeah, bringing on Terrell Thomas, who we've got as cover for left-back this season. Again, cannot wait to see that. Look, there's a whole lot of different points of view surrounding this, but I stick by what I believe. I do not think Holden should have been sacked. I think he should have been more given more time. I think he should have been backed correctly, which I don't think he was. Same with, really, Ben Garner. And dare I even say the same as Johnny Jackson. When we go into the season once again underprepared as we are with injuries hitting this team with how injury ravaged this squad is I just don't get it I don't understand it yes tactically and formation selections and team selections have been questionable I will accept that however I've said it so many times the manager is not the problem at this club it's not the bigger picture it goes way beyond that it's the people above unfortunately so far global football partners have shown not much difference to Thomas Sangard and they need to get their act together. We need to hear from them, first and foremost. We need to actually hear from them. Because as far as I'm aware, Charlie Meffin is the only person that's done the talking so far. I genuinely think the only person of the major investors has actually come to a game outside of Meffin is Hiroyoki Onu. The guy that runs that Singapore football investment thing. I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is because we ain't heard from him. We ain't heard from him. We ain't heard from Gabriel Brenner. We ain't heard from Joshua Friedman. We haven't heard from anyone else. Mark Boyan, is that another one? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know who they are. None of us do. We need to hear from them. We need to hear from them because unfortunately the fans are well against them again, already, against the new ownership. You know, the gates at the Valley for the next upcoming game tomorrow against Fleetwood. I can imagine that's going to be evidently lower than what it was against uh, Port Vale. Look, as I said, some people are quite happy that they've sacked an underachieving manager and they've shown a bit of ambition. But ultimately, when you sack a manager and you don't have one lined up and you're interviewing managers, you're in seemingly no rush to sign a new manager. Who in their right mind would come to the club in the current situation? We have to be one of the most unattractive football clubs in the country right now. And one of the most depressing. Which leads me on to our new manager search. I'll just be very bluntly honest with you right now. I don't care who comes in now. I really don't. I don't care. I don't care because we've had so many and I just have to laugh at it now as to how many we've had. And obviously there's a lot to laugh at with our managerial search right now. I've seen loads of names flying about the place. Obviously there's been the standard Cholton fans calling for Lee Bowyer to come back, calling for Chris Powell to come back, calling for Alan Kirbishley to come back. What is our fans' obsession with Alan Kirbishley coming back as manager? Seriously, the guy has not managed a football club since the early 2000s. He's been out of management for maybe nearly two decades now. If he's, if he's to hold any sort of role in the football club, it should be director of football or technical director or somewhere on the board at the club, which people have been crying out for for the longest time, to be honest with you. And I would love nothing more. Lee Bowyer, there's been a lot of rumours surrounding him, people wanting him back. I find it hilarious because the people that are calling for Lee Bowyer are the most vocal calling for Lee Bowyer. I can guarantee are the same people that were calling for him to be sacked back in 2021. Do I want him back, to be honest with you? I don't. I think because he had his time at this club, he took us as far as he could. And the back end of his stint at the club, unfortunately, was very poor. Obviously, he gave us some fantastic moments. And I do think probably he is the best Charlton manager since Chris Powell. And we have to accept that. And I will never forget the memories he gave us, the good ones he gave us. But I don't think I'd want even Bowyer back at this current situation. And I don't think he wants to come back either. Richard Cawley has said that we've not made a formal approach yet. There's been loads of people suggesting that he is interested in a return. I don't see why he would want to return in the club's current situation. And the same goes for Chris Powell, who we have flat out insulted 
with the offer that we offered him. We gave him an interim role for this weekend. The bloke has been coaching at Tottenham and England. Like, how insulting is that? So fair play to Chris Powell for turning that down, because Jesus Christ. How how an interim role for this weekend? That is just, I, 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 I can't even wrap my head around that. But again, I don't see why Chris Powell would come back in the Kodakin situation, because he's been under a situation like this in the past with Roland the Chatelates, where there is a few other people that we've been interviewing. Michael Appleton has been one of them, obviously the former Blackpool, Lincoln and Oxford manager. A lot of people I've seen been really against that, to be honest with you, from the names that have been mentioned, I actually wouldn't mind Michael Appleton. Did well with an Oxford side, a young Oxford side that got promoted from League 2 not long ago. He did well with a Lincoln team, I believe he was in charge when they got the playoffs uh, back in 2021. I may have that wrong, someone correct me in the comments, I think it was him. Obviously, his time at Blackpool wasn't very good in the championship, and that's probably why most people are not keen on having him back. But personally, out of all the other names I think I've seen flying about, I would love to see Appleton back over the other names, which consist of the likes of Danny Cowley, who I don't want anywhere near this club, to be honest with you. He's had his time at Portsmouth. He took him as far as he could. And I think, to be honest with you, he's a manager that's out of his depth and a manager that is not going to be able to progress a club forward, especially us in the current situation we find us in. So, yeah, don't want Danny Cowley whatsoever. John Brady has been linked with a job as well from Northampton Town. Could be a, an all right appointment. I think Northampton, he's done pretty well with them over the last couple of years. Could be, again, a decent uh, appointment, someone to look forward. Mark Bonner, I've heard, has been another name that's been flying about as well. Again, I do like him as well from Cambridge. Uh, again, a manager that's progressed that club well. Obviously struggled really badly last year. Uh, but they, this season, they've had a really good start to the year. <clears throat> Very good start to the season. Um, so poaching him from them would obviously derail them a lot. And I think Bonner is, again, a decent, young and up-and-coming manager, in my opinion, anyway. But the name that's been flying about the most recently, and the biggest one we need to discuss, is Dave Challoner, the Stockport County manager. Now, reportedly, we were set to interview him. It looked pretty nailed on that he was going to be uh, a done deal. Um, according to Richard Cawley, it didn't suggest that there was going to be a timeline that uh, Challoner would come in before tomorrow, uh, which definitely doesn't look like the case now following the latest update, which I will give in a second. Um, but yeah, Ryan Whelan, journalist, comes out and says that Challoner has turned us down in favour of staying at Stockport, which you do have to laugh as to how far we've sunk, but that's all I can really say. It just shows where the club is at the moment, that we are just an unattractive club. But I saw so many people... Like, scold the appointment of Chan and they're like, oh, what are we doing signing the Stockport manager? Oh, I'm really sorry that we're not going out to sign Pep Guardiola or Carlo Ancelotti or Antonio Conte or Jurgen Klopp. Charlton fans really do annoy me. They really do. Like, genuinely, like, I mean, I, I don't know why I'm making a case for Chan to become manager because I don't care. I really don't care who comes in now. I don't give a shit because ultimately they're going to be up against it. Challoner would have been up against it enough as it is. Why are people scolding managers before they've even come through the door? This is another reason as to why we're an unattractive club, because there's just constant moaners within this fan base that just scold every single thing we do. Manager appointment, transfer signings, anything. Why would any player or manager want to come to the club when the, some of these fans and these fan base do nothing but just whinge and moan and scold the players and the managers that come in before they've even stepped through the door, before they've even put a pair of boots on and kicked a ball, before they've even got a shirt and tie on and stuck in their own tactics and their own style of play? I think Challoner, to be honest with you, would have been one of the more or better appointments we could make. A manager that has done really well with Stockport, a manager that has a lot of promotions on his CV. A manager that I think could be capable of doing a job at League One level. He nearly got promoted to League One last season if it wasn't for a penalty shootout loss to Carlisle. And a couple of injuries, apparently. He'd have been a decent appointment, in my opinion. But because it's not Pep or Ancelotti or Conte, fans will just go ballistic. Maybe, I mean, it probably applies for me as well because, I mean, I think I do have to accept or I struggle to accept that we are a League One club and a struggling, mediocre League One club. I think I said it a couple like at the end of last season. I think I sort of come out of that trap. I think I kind of fell, fell into the trap of us being one of the more bigger clubs in the league because of the transfer window that we had and how a lot of people were predicting us to do and the excitement going into the season. But the reality is, 
and I've probably come to accept it now, and probably needed to say this and be humbled enough to say it, is that we are a mediocre League One club, a struggling League One team. And until people accept that, we're never going to go anywhere. Chaloner, I think, would have been a decent appointment, and I don't blame him whatsoever for turning down stop, turning down us to stay at Stockball because, like I said, we are just an unattractive club with the way the club's being run. It's, I don't blame him whatsoever. But again, just I think some of the fans really need to wind their neck in because they, it just does my nothing, honestly. I think anyone who comes in now will just be scolded. No one will be happy with the appointment. We could appoint John Brady and people will still scold that. We could appoint Mark Bonner and still scold him. They're up against it enough as it is coming to this club. Let's give them a chance, eh? Let's see what they do and give them the time, and give them the backing, because we've gone through so many managers that I don't want to see another managerial sacking for at least three years, or even longer than that. I want to see some stability, some progression. That's what I want to see from the next manager. Like I said, I don't care what name comes in. Whoever comes in, I'll back them. Simple as that. And that is all we can do as a fan base right now. Back the managers and back the players that join us. And we certainly have to back the man that's been thrown in at the deep end as the interim manager, which, of course, is Jason Pearce, the under-18s coach and, of course, former Charlton player. And we'd have to say, dare I say, a club legend, someone who served the club really well since 2016 to 2022, was a loyal servant to the club. Don't know if it, a legend probably a strong word. A club servant, a, a very good club servant, should we say. We've got to back him on Saturday. I'm going to be 100% behind him tomorrow because... He's going to be well and up against it. He's going to be well and truly against it. But I do hope he gets something out of that team because I think, like Johnny Jackson, he understands this club and he understands what it's like to play for this team. And I think he will. I hope he gives them a bollocking, to be honest with you. And he does get that team playing with spirit and playing with fight and hopefully gets them understanding that they're in a privileged position to play for this football club. And hopefully they will put on the badge, wear it with pride and go out there and put in a decent performance against Fleetwood, a struggling Fleetwood team who have got off to a worse start than what we have. So, PSC, you're up against it enough as it is, but I'm 100% behind you, mate. And hopefully, he can deliver the goods on Saturday. If he doesn't, then I'm not going to blame him at all, to be honest with you, because, as I said, he's been chucked into the deep end and he probably isn't ready to be a manager. But at least he's a coach. He is a coach. He's a decent football coach. Who obviously, is JP6 Academy, I think it's called. He is a decent coach, so he's got that behind him. But... We've got to see where this goes, man. We've really got to see where this goes. I don't know who's going to be appointed as manager. I don't really care, as I said, but whoever does come in is going to be well and truly against it. Today is going to be a very hectic day and chaotic day, obviously being transfer deadline day. A lot of players and rumours have been flying about the place in terms of ins and outs. We've already signed one today in Tenai Watson, right back coming in from, well, as a free agent, he was formerly of MK Dons. I won't go into too much detail about this signing or any of the other players we've been linked with because I want to save that for um, another video next week where I, probably, where I properly review the transfer window. In summary, I think Watson is a good signing. I think it's a position that we've needed. Now Nathan Asimway can develop properly rather than just chuck him into the deep end. Watson has obviously been well established at this level with his time at MK Dons, was a consistent player at this level. So I think we can't really, you know, we can't not like this signing. And he signed a two-year deal on a free transfer. So yeah, can't complain with that whatsoever. It looks like signing number two is going to be another Watson, another player with two names. Obviously, we've got two Campbells in uh, Tyrese and Chem. Now we've got two Watsons in Tenai, and it looks very set to be Louis Watson coming in on loan from Luton Town. According to Richard Cawley, our transfer strategy for this uh, deadline day was going to be a centre-back, a right-back and a striker. We've got the right-back now in Watson. Um, we weren't planning on signing a central midfielder, but with the injury news to Conor McGrandles, uh, Watson is now going to come in on a temporary basis. Of course, McGrandles, it was very heavily linked that he was going to be on the way out of the club. Uh, according to Richard Cawley, he has suffered an injury, which will take him out for a period of time, which means he won't be leaving, so we do need an extra body. Of course, Jack Payne has left the club. He's gone to MK Dons on loan, which I find very confusing, especially considering um, whether we weren't going to replace him, but it looks like we are going to replace him now in Watson, uh, in Louis Watson. I think Jack Payne will have to go down as one of the most overhated players to play for this club. I really don't think Payne was as bad as people made him out to be. So I wish him all the best at MK Dons on loan at League 2. And unfortunately, that will probably mean his Charlton career is over because he is out of contract in the summer. Going back to Louis Watson, I don't know much about him, to be honest with you. He seems to be very highly rated. Formerly of the West Ham Academy, so he's a South Londoner. He used to play for Derby County. 
before Luton signed him last year. Hasn't played many minutes at championship level, so this is a perfect time for him to get some regular minutes at League One level, especially now considering we've got injury concerns in the team with McGrandles being injured, Fraser being out long term, Kamara still struggling with the foot problem he has. In terms of the other positions we're looking to strengthen, uh, centre-back is one we're looking at, apparently. Uh, it's been heavily linked thanks to Gianluca Di Marzio, a Italian journalist that apparently we are set to sign James Abanqua, I think his name is, on loan from Udinese. So we're looking overseas. Would be our first player coming in from overseas since Ronnie Schwartz. Can't say I know much about him. Apparently he's very highly rated at the Italian club, so we'll see if that goes through. Uh, and that could be the centre-back. And then the striker department. We've been linked with a number of strikers. Slobodan Tedic was one I saw on loan from Manchester City. Spent last season on loan at Barnsley. Kion Itete, a, a Cardiff City striker. Played a decent amount of games in the Championship last year. Has had previous experience at this level with Cheltenham Town. So he knows Alfie May. And then the biggest one out of all of them, linked today, Freddie Ladapo. L Richard Cawley did say... He's not saying for a second that it's going to happen, but he said that Charlton are keen admirers of Ladapo. Ipswich are set to sign Dane Scarlett. Apparently, they're looking at Joe Gelhart as well. So with those two coming in, Ladapo could be on the move back to League One and Charlton are one of the clubs interested. I would say it's unlikely, but if we were to sign him, it'd be unbelievable. And the goal scorer that we need, because he is a very proven goal scorer at this level, as well as Alfie May, as well as Miles Leeburn, as well as Chuck Zanike, if, he ever, if we ever see him in a Charlton shirt again. So... It's very exciting. It's very exciting in terms of how we're going to play this. Those are the players we're linked with in terms of the positions. We're not signing a left-back, which means Terrell Thomas is going to be the cover for Tyra Doon this season, which I cannot wait for. As I said, I'm not very confident in having him as cover as left-back. There's obviously a few departures to be had. Charlie Kirk could be a notable departure to happen. Uh, I hope the airline Jaisimi has shown the door. There's been rumours suggesting that Corey Blackett-Taylor could be off to Huddersfield, which I'm hoping to God doesn't happen. Um, if that does happen, then yeah, that's going to be an absolutely massive loss to this team. Although I'm sure there'll be some people that'll be sitting there saying, oh, he's not a big loss. He shouldn't be in the starting 11. He shouldn't be in the starting 11 as a wing back. We should be using him in his natural position. If we lose him, we've got a massive hole to fill in the wing, uh, in our wide position, which we've already had with Jez Saki going, um, returning to Crystal Palace. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how deadline day goes. I'm probably going to be glued to my phone up until 11 to see if anything goes through. We've got the right back. We look to have the centre midfielder in. Louis Watson could be a done deal by the time this video comes out. And we've also got to sign a centre back and we need to sign a striker. So hopefully we can get that over the line. And that is where this video is going to end. I did say there was no structure to it. I did say that it was going to be a rant. But yeah, just another frustrating spell at Charlton and another season that's just been absolute chaos. And so much promise that came from this season has now just come crashing down in an instant. What a great way to come back to England from my much seeded break, just back into the chaos and the rain and just summing up how this mood is right now. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of the current situation? Do you think Dean Holden should have been sacked? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of our transfer rumours and dealings? Who would you like to see coming through the door? Who do you think should leave the club today? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Ronington. Have a nice day. I will see you all for the match reaction tomorrow against Fleetwood Town and then next week we'll be doing a bit more championship content reviewing our transfer window and doing some more stuff in regards to League One as well so stay tuned for that take it easy stay safe and I'll see you all later the Charlton Circus continues